Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. TJB Chris here again, welcoming you to another Tandy Computer video. And tonight, I've been unable to control myself again, adding another member to the collection, this time by some sort of adoption. And that is this magnificent beast. The Tandy 1000 RLX. This is an interesting, almost Franken Tandy 1000, and that it is the first Tandy 1000 with VGA graphics. It is not the first with a 286 processor, but it is the first to offer extended memory. It's got a whole 384K of extended memory. And that's because the, one, the hard drive system came with one megabyte of RAM. It also came with Deskmate and ROM. And of course, this machine does have the hard drive, and the hard drive actually functions, though it is disconnected. So I'll show you that. The mouse did not come with the machine, although interestingly enough, the Tandy logo here on the keyboard had the plastic on it, the protective plastic. And I think that was even more satisfying removing it 29 years later, when it was 29 years old than it would have been when it was brand new. So anyway, we're going to talk a little bit about this machine while I'm taking it apart, and we'll take a look at the inside. And while you're wondering, this is Deskmate, but this is not the Deskmate and ROM that comes with it. So let's get the top off and take a look at the inside. You'll note, by the way, while I'm about to turn this off, that the... Uh, power button doesn't actually stay in and you can see where you know they jammed shit in there to make it stay in and uh, it does now stay in it's old enough so we'll just for now it works I might try and see if I can find out what's broken with the mechanism when I take the machine apart it's actually got some convergence issues along the edges of the monitor anyway so I might see if we can adjust that out and if we do I'll take a look at the power button anyway meantime let's get back to the game here so you may have noticed while I was panning by that we do have Whiskey, a little scotch, a little scotch. Now, I usually say classic computers, classic whiskey, a winning combination. Um, well, this is a classic computer in a sense. It's also a little bit of a Frank and Tandy 1000. And this is a bit of a unclassic scotch. So, cheers. Mm. Anyway, let's get this thing apart. There's just two screws on the back here. And it just kind of snaps off. Just pull out the sides here and lift it up and then forward and out. And the cover comes off. Now, interesting note here. Uh, I did not mention the floppy drive doesn't work. When I took it apart, the top head is floating. It's not uh, properly attached. Whether or not I can attach that and get it lined up again, I don't know. That means I do have an alternative method for getting software in. I, you're probably wondering why not use like a Lotharec, like I seem to love, or one of those uh, USB floppy units. And that's because they were nice enough to mold the floppy drive bays that are covers right into the damn case. And I really don't want to take a saw to it and cut them out. So I don't really consider that an option. I'm not going to mutilate this machine. So worst case, I'll wait and see if another Sony floppy drive that's powered by the cable and made for a Tandy computer will suffice. So looking at the inside here, we have the riser card on the back. This is a 1000 RLXA. That means it has the full size joystick connectors all on that riser card there. Uh, you, the volume controls on there. Got a serial port and all the other pertinents. This has VGA graphics, the first Tandy 1000 to have VGA graphics built in. It also has one meg of RAM that comes standard with the hard drive model. The non-hard drive model has 512K. And of course, I have my addition. This is an XTCF Lite Revision 2 from Low Tech um, with a compact flash card that the 4825SX did not like, but this one seems to love. And here you can see the existing hard drive is disconnected. Um, again, it does work. I did pull some software off of it, just a couple of things. So it was an interesting uh, VGA version of Wheel of Fortune on there, which used, uses Tandy sound for the startup screen, but the rest is all just clunky PC speaker sounds. So I'd just say F that. But anyway, 10 megahertz, 286, um, has extended memory. So that's really the inside. There's not much. The power supply is tiny. I want to say it's 25 watts. The machine has no fan. It's quiet. So that's really the inside. There's not much to these machines. Uh, let's take a look at the back panel, shall we? And you can see full-size joystick ports. We have a printer port, PS2 mouse. Um, I don't have a slot cover for the card yet here, but we'll get that. And VGA monitor, serial card, power cord. So all in all, pretty compact, lightweight unit, a lot of fun. 
All right, let's get it back together and we'll take a look at the software on it and then we'll take a look at how we get software on it in light of the broken floppy drive. All right, whole system shot. We'll power this up and we'll watch the boot sequence and see the button does kind of stick in there for me and I'll be quiet so you can hear this thing beep. All right, well it beeps, you can see the XT IDE ROM. I'm gonna let it boot from the C drive first. That's the, the um, compact flash card and we have smart drive cache on there, and I have the mouse driver, which is the Logitech mouse driver. First things first, everyone who has an RLX has to do this, so as a member of the RLX club now, I had to install Windows 3.1. Um, I also see the mouse is not working, so we're gonna have to address that. Uh, but I can move around with the keyboard, and I will say that, you know, as has been said many times, Windows on the RLX is pokey. Um, you know, this isn't gonna win any awards, and it's particularly noticeable if you are opening a file of some kind. So, and working through systemnetworks.wri. And it's, it's gonna take its time. I wanna grab a Snickers. Anyway, um, so, you know, it's, if I scroll, you can really see as it kind of rolls through anything that's not in the buffer. Blah. But of course, when I go to the buffered areas, yeah. But as you can see, write's not the fastest, but, you know, and this is just text. I mean, there's rich text here, at least, but, you know, still. Um, you know, the Windows 3.1 isn't, but this is not a Windows 3.1 machine. This is a desk mate machine, and I really only put Windows on here because, well, again, apparently it's part of the, it's part of the way you get your membership card into the RLX ownership club, and it is kind of neat to do. I, it is actually more than a little fascinating. Uh, I did note the original hard drive had a couple of interesting things on it. Um, we're perfect 5.1s on here. So I feel like I'm in high school about to tape, type a paper. Damn it, I can't type. Again, get a camera on me and I can't type. I'm also at a funny angle, but still. So that's... Uh, we're perfect, and I've got some various other things on here which are not Windows related, so let's take, I mean, we're perfect, it's not. Okay, here comes Deskmate, and hopefully the camera will play nice with this. I realized for the Windows 3.1 stuff it may not have looked so nice. The desktop here looks just like the Tandy 1000 SX desktop that you've seen in other videos. This is a game night uh, desktop, and it will probably be a game night machine, actually. This will run some of the games that the SX struggled with. But of course, we've got the typical classics on here. We've got Thexter, and here comes some Tandy sound. Thexter is one of my favorite games. First played on the Coco, of course. May have only had the first five levels in repeating sped up order, but it was still an awesome game. Hear that sound. This game is real hard. Oh, not bad. See? There we go. So that's Dexter. Uh, you know, 16 color graphics, Tandy Sound, all the good stuff. King's Quest 3 is on here. We're in the rules Carmen San Diego. And then you've got your normal desk made applications. So, yeah. Text editor, which I'm guessing probably goes faster than write in Windows 3.1. Let's take a look. We got dmvid.doc. Let's take a look. Yep. I mean, it doesn't have to show formatting, and this is, you know. But anyway, this is a Deskmate machine, like I said. This is not a Windows machine. So that's a lot of the software that's on here. There's a few other things. You know, we talked about WordPerfect. How do I get software onto this thing? Um, given that the floppy drive is broken, I need a way to get software over here. And here it is, the Tandy 1000 SX. With the exception of the 8-inch systems, Had to hear the beep. With the exception of the 8 inch systems, this is the glue that holds my machines together. It reads and writes floppy disks from the Model 4, from the Coco, from the Apple II, and from my other MS DOS machines. But how do I get the software over there? It does have a network card in it. The 1000SX is actually network enabled. And I was going to do a video that on that, and I never did. So I'll tell you what, if you want to see the 
not quite how to, but how to video on the 1000SX network, leave me something in the comments and maybe I'll revisit. Um, instead, what I did was I made use of my favorite mechanism for transferring data, if I can get my zoom buttons right, and that is the serial ports. So, let's get that moving. I'll, I'll do a quick demo of it. That's right. This is Microsoft Interlink and Microsoft InterServer. If you haven't seen these before, these came with DOS 6, the DOS 6.2. And the way this worked is basically you had a server side running on one end, and then on the client end, you had a driver that you'll put into config sys, which we will do, that then maps drives on the other side to the drives on this, and then you can copy the files back. And it does run at 115, 200 baud. Um, it will vary the speed if it's unreliable, but it does in fact work. And while it's not the fastest, um, in the com for the convenience factor, it makes up for a lot, and it's a lot faster than writing multiple floppy disks. So let's get this over onto the RLX, and we'll map some drives and copy some files. All right, this is easy enough to do. All right, and that should be it. If I reboot it, now as it starts up, we will see a interlink bit at the end. There it goes, just scrolled off the screen. Um, but now I have mapped drives and I can show this by taking you over to the Tandy 1000. And here we are. You can see A on the 1000SX. I just called this the Tandy 1000. There are two 1000s. Whatever. A equals H, B equals I, C equals J, LPT1 equals LPT2. So now we have established drive communication. So let's take a look at what's on those drives. Okay, so since I don't have a floppy disk in, we'll just use drive J, which is the hard drive on the 1000SX. And now we have to wait for the 1000SX to go through and find all the free space free, but you can see this is all the different stuff on here that's on the 1000SX's hard drive. It's TRS-80 there, that's where I've got some of my Coco and Model 4 disks. May not be where I have my whiskey, but I'm having some of my whiskey. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Although that got done before I thought it would, so either way. So let's say I just want to copy this all the way over. Let's, let's just do that. And just use xcopy. And I can say the, the trailing backslash there tells MS DOS that this is a directory. If you don't specify that, Xcopy will ask you if you are copying to a file or a directory. So now it's going to read a bunch of source files and it's going to copy them over. You can see some of my previous projects, my OS 9 ROM stuff's there. Um, my performance, different counting methods, do different things, crap is there. Um, yeah, so in retrospect, I would have done a different directory, but hey, that's what music and speed up are for. So with that in mind, um, that's it's, it actually it's usually not that bad to copy stuff over. Those are just all disk images and I didn't think ahead. So. Uh, but with that, it's xcopy, and for the few things I have to copy, I can get stuff over here. If I really get desperate for higher speed things, I can always take the CF card out, but that's where we are. So, one final thing. As I noted, in Windows, the mouse doesn't work. And we are going to fix that. And we're going to fix that using MS-DOS debug, and a little tidbit I actually found on the Vintage Computer Federation forums. And I will be sure to cite my source for this, because... 
I want to take credit for someone else's work, but someone figured out a one byte patch to solve a 30 year old problem. So what's the first thing we're going to do here? We are going to set the mouse up, which is not going to make it work. Okay, so the way you do this on this particular machine is to use the Logitech driver, lmouse.drv. I already have one installed, so let's use the current. We will let Windows restart, but you will notice that when Windows restarts, the mouse will not work. As you can see, we still have no mouse. What do we do about this? Okay, what we do about this, and you may be able to see my nice TRS-80 manual input component shirt logo on here. I'm going to make a copy of lmouse.drv to lmouse.old. We're going to debug lmouse.drv. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to search for the PS2 driver initialization portion of the driver and we're going to change that to use the byte for the machine ID that the RLX does. So let's do that. Let's search for 0000 and we're going to go through, I'm going to go with 3800. It's about, it's only 12k in size and this is in hex. And I get that it's not 100 in the decimal sense but 3800. And then we're going to search for, I'm going to say we're searching for 3C. Yeah, FA. And there it is. So let's, let's see what that looks like. B one two three CFA. Okay, so this is on two five B three. We need to change that to FF. So E two five B three FF. Okay, now we're going to D two five B zero, and now this should become three CFA to three CFF. There it is. We're going to write this. That's it. And then we're going to quit. And now we're going to go back to Windows and see if it works. And when it does, I'll cite my source. Hey, we got the mouse. Look at that. And we have an arrow pointer. Look at that. So now we have a mouse in Windows. So I can do basically the only games that are going to really play well on this in Windows, Solitaire, and Minesweeper. Not bad. Very good. Didn't want to do it. Okay, anyway, so that is really it. Um, I figured patching the mouse driver would be fun. So a little background on that. The mouse driver is actually patched. So this came from Cloud Shotzi. S -C -A, Cloud S-C-H-A-T-Z-E. If I'm saying it wrong, I'm sorry. I suck at pronunciation. Welcome to other people. Not intentional. Um, but this is actually a really uh, nice post from May 13, 2020. Um, actually talks about issues with mouse driver in Windows 3.0 and Windows 3.1 and the differences and how to get them to work on the RLX and that's where I got this from. Well the person doesn't go into the details of how to edit it, they just say use a hex editor, that's how you do it with debug. It's really pretty simple. So that is it. That is the Tandy 1000 RLX HD. It is a great machine. I'm really happy to have it. It kind of fell in my lap again but I'm really happy to have this thing in my collection and I think it's gonna make a great project in Game Night Edition. So until next time, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.